What's going on, everyone? Today, we got some new presentation news for NHL 24. EA dropped a eight minute long trailer with my good friend Tactics HD, and I have yet to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and watch the trailer with you, break down what I hear, and hopefully there's some big changes to come. Now guys, before we get started, if you're new, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. NHL 24 drops in two weeks, and I'm gonna have so much damn content for you. Let's get started. Tactics HD, and this is the presentation deep dive for NHL 24. I hope I don't get copyright striked for the audio. <laughs> Looks like the same Sally for uh, Stanley Cup. Nice. Ten years now, and the last month we got to sit down with the lead presentation producer at ENHL, David Pritchett, where we talked about all the new features and changes to the upcoming game. Now, my first question was about the new height moments feature. Ah. It makes all the arenas in game come alive. We've really uh, kind of expanded out what we call, at least under the hood, the crowd engagement score or the CES. So there's positive events, there's negative events. And as you kind of build up positive events, it really gets the home crowd uh, kind of riled up. I'm going to pause it because that sounds really cool, right? That sounds awesome. One of the biggest complaints I've seen about the NHL 24 beta, I actually made a post on Twitter and in my Discord asking what people didn't like about it. And a lot of people said that the crowd was too loud. So we'll see how this plays out. The next feature I'm really excited for in NHL 24 is the new creation zone environment. Basically, this is where you are whenever you're creating your player, creating your team. And a cool feature they added this year. I will say I like this. The change makes it a lot easier to navigate the menus. This is good. This is an improvement. Good job. Create 30 more teams, 1,500 more skaters, and 200 more goalies than previous years. So those custom rosters should be awesome. But next, guys, I'll have Bridget tell you about some of the different customization options within that mode. Over 150 new. Oh, that's kind of sick. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The animated spider. It, it, it was glowing. Yeah, that's kind of sick. I didn't know that was going to be in here. I, I didn't play a lot of World of Shell last year, so that may have already been a thing, though I don't think so. Interesting. That's definitely interesting. I don't know how people are going to feel about it, though. Let me know down below how you feel about the animated jerseys and skates and stuff pieces of vanity gear that are animated which need to kind of be seen to believe and i think we've got 130 that looks kind of sick too pieces of vanity gear how many sorry how many new pieces of gear we've got 130 130 pieces of vanity gear not bad not bad okay animated, but looks super premium oh what is that <laughs> okay that's kind of sick looking you want to look like a menace out on the ice, I guess you can do that. Little known fact, that's actually what I look like when I get out of bed in the morning. Got a new no tape stick option, which the thing okay, well, for, for quite some time. Awesome, and a I lot guess. Of work has been done on the material tuning to make the sticks as authentic as possible. Okay. The metalness, the graphite, making them look exactly right. Another big one that the fans have been asking for for a long time is you can now put a cage on anything. Oh, nice, okay. We've got the full visor supported as well. And also uh, the skin material, not just inside of Creation Zone, but inside of the game itself, it looks better than it's ever looked before. It looks much more authentic. We spent a lot of time in the fine details of that skin. My feel looks good there. As authentic as possible. And what has to be the most drastic change of presentation this year's game, guys, is the new Flex Moments. Mm. All right. This is where things are going to get divided, because I actually really like the Flex Moments. I know a lot of people don't, so let's see what they have to say about it. Celebrating from your regular camera angle, but you're actually up close and personal now on your player. I'll have Pritchard tell you the thought process behind that change. Previous years, we've allowed the user to celebrate, but it's always just been from the gameplay camera. So you're kind of just a few pixels celebrating on the screen. And if you look at, you know, any images on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, of your favorite player celebrating, it's always like down low and up close, and you can kind of see it's true. the body and the face. They're usually screaming. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if you're watching, like, say, the Red Wings play and Dylan Larkin scores a goal, they don't, like, zoom out and just show an overhead shot of him celebrating. That's a good point. Streaming kind of thing. Uh, we needed to capture that. So in offline modes like franchise and uh, play now, the, the authentic modes, um, you know, we have a selection of authentic celebrations that can be chosen along with um, signature celebrations for certain players. And then inside of Ishal, World of Chell, uh, there's 75 new celebrations. That nice. Some of them are pretty crazy, but one thing they all have in common is that they look awesome. Uh, brand new camera, brand new lighting, and facial animation for every single one of them that is appropriate for the celebration. So 75 new celebrations. They didn't say anything about Ultimate Team, which obviously is my main game mode, but 75 new celebrations, plus I'm sure you have all the old ones as well. 
that could be interesting. Hopefully, in Hockey Ultimate Team, you're able to map them. Um, I know there was discussion about that. There was talk about that, but I haven't heard anything since then. So, um, hopefully, you can map them to, like, Triangle, and you'll do a different celebration and stuff like that. But we'll, we'll see what happens. And now, with Flex Moments, the other big change of presentation this year has to be the new Dynamic Rink Boards. Mm, yeah. Controversial opinions about those. I asked Pritchett how they're going to ensure that they're not distracting for players. When you score... You personally, know. before I even listen to this, before I hear what they have to say, personally... I don't find them distracting. I thought I would and I was worried about it, but I actually found myself using them quite often when it came to like uh, how much time is left in the period. Like in the final 10 seconds, it ticks down. I was looking up and looking at the boards instead of looking down at the scoreboard. Special animation there and we bring up, um, you know, the most relevant stat. So if it's a career milestone. Or yeah, see, that kind of looks sick to me. I like that. I think that looks cool. That. That's what we're going to showcase on the boards. And then in the world of Chell, uh, there's this whole new kind of customization, uh, player banners we call them, but they're, they're graphics uh, that you can kind of customize your character with and they kind of take over the boards as well. See, that's sick though. Like we need that in Ultimate Team. Like I understand World of Shell, that's the most played mode and everyone plays that game mode. No one cares about Hut. No one cares about offline. We need that in every mode. That's sick. I like that, man. Now, with all that new information we just play on the boards, ask Pritchett how that could potentially help players who play without audio, which I sometimes do. I'm not going to lie. I play without audio. Leave a comment down below on if you play without or with audio in game. Because I, I don't, I haven't for, I don't know how long. I know most people I talk to don't use the audio anymore. I mean, I'm going to make a Twitter poll, actually. I'm going to make a Twitter poll, and we'll put the results here, and we can see what people are saying uh, by the time I'm done editing this video. But let me know down below if you play with the in-game audio on or off. Here's his thoughts. So we've heard a lot about people, obviously, not playing with, with audio. And yeah. Audio is awesome, and everyone should play with audio. We get it. There are people that don't want to play with audio. Instead of, um, you know, doing something like bring up an overlay or something like that, you know, we just put it on the boards themselves. So if there's a delayed penalty, the empty net, so a goalie got pulled, uh, those types of things we now just put up on the boards. And yeah, okay. Users, the great thing about it is like users don't have to break focus. They don't have to. Yeah, so I will say that like when you're taking a penalty, if there's a delayed penalty, the boards will tell you that there's a delayed penalty. You don't have to look down at the, the, the score clock anymore. I think another solution would have just been have the scoreboard in the top corner like it used to be, but hey. At least we're trying something different. Out of the game world and kind of look at an overlay or look up at the score clock. They can just kind of, they, they see it already just, just from playing. They just kind of see it out of the corner of their eye. And it's a super effective way um, to kind of communicate information. And it's helpful whether you've got... It's an interesting camera angle. People that don't have audio, it's super helpful. And now regards to graphical improvements in NHL 24, there's now sweat exertion on players. There's sweat! <laughs> I'm sorry. Do we need this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they're like, yeah, we're going to put in tons of work by adding sweat to the players. Man, we're playing like overhead and whatnot. Like we can't see the stuff most of the time. I don't know how important this is. That feature as well as whether or not it'll be available on all consoles. All of the new heads, 22 new star heads, they're in all heads. 22 new star heads, okay. Gen 5, but the exertion is... Maddie Beneers there, nice. Uh, this year, and it's... Looks cool. Oh, there's Bedard. Is the nice, nice. Players face, they get more flush, they get more sweaty. Kind of as they're out there on the ah, Dylan Larkin, my captain, smiling like he's high as shit. The break kind of calms down a little bit. They jump back on and starts all kind of all over again. So it's a very cool uh, 94 celebration there. Nice. I like it. I like it. I like the celebrations. I do personal with the players, but yes, Gen 5 only this year. Gen 5 only for that stuff. Okay, color commentator in NHL 24. Ah, yeah, Cheryl Pounder, right? Oh, it's down Cheryl Pounder and asked for you to explain what made her the perfect choice for that role. Cheryl kind of came in at this last second audition for us and it was like, oh, she's... I'm going to actually pause it. If I'm not mistaken, Ray Ferraro actually opted out of the contract. I think he said he was moving on. I could totally be wrong on that, but I believe they actually had to look for somebody new, which is where uh, Cheryl Pounder came in. And I believe the story they told me, it was like a last second audition. Like the very last one, like the last person to audition for it. And they were like, wow, she's great. So they ended up using her. Um, I'm very curious to see who else was in there, but... Uh, Cheryl Pounder, welcome to the EA NHL series. Working on this well, game. it's incredible. You can tell that they are moving and shaking. They're getting the puck going north. They're transitioning so fast. And man, do they have their opponent on their heels. A goaltender, they have to have talent. They have to have mobility. They have to be able to track the puck. But they have to have a willingness to find it and fight for any second shot. And that's exactly what happens here. Out battling, out willing, and you make the save. And in addition to...
Yeah, so I, I again, like I said, I don't really play with audio on, so the commentary and, and the soundtrack and stuff doesn't really affect me usually. There are a lot of people who do play with it on, so hopefully Shara Pounder is a good addition to the game and you guys really do enjoy her. Sorry guys, there's actually authentic tracks being used as part of the new face Yeah, people. yeah, I remember this. Talk more about that. Face-off moments are pretty awesome. We're bringing authentic music back into the back end of the game. I like this, I like this. What we're really going for is authentic emotion. So we needed those authentic tracks and we got some classic tracks like a Darude Sandstorm. We got Tsunami by Dubs, Fits in the Tantrum, Hand Clap, and of course- Nice, nice. <laughs> Josh, why? <laughs> That's funny. Don't ever ask me to dance. Now, my favorite presentation feature in NHL 23 had to be the all-night nice projection, so I asked Pritchett whether or not we'd be getting any new unique ones for different teams in NHL 24. Here's what Pritchett had to say. We reached out to uh, the teams. That okay, that looks awesome. I, you know what, maybe I missed it. Is this like authentic? Is this what the every arena looks like? Cause I'm not, obviously I haven't been to every arena and I don't watch everyone's game. So that looked really cool. Four, here's what Pritchett had to say. We reached out to uh, the teams that we didn't have an authentic on ice projection for. So we've got Washington properly represented. There we go. Okay, so it is nice. We have the Seattle Kraken, which looks. Oh, that's awesome. Inside of the game, plus others as well. But yes, definitely an effort was made there to try to get away from some of those generic on ice projections that we have for some of the teams and get as authentic as possible. And now finally, here, guys. This nice. I like that. Like me, I asked whether or not the offline replays were returning to NHL 24. Here's your answer. Finally, we can talk about it. <laughs> People were asking for this for a crazy amount of time here. I couldn't believe it. I'm going to pause it. Like, as someone who skips every single replay and just wants to move on and not watch any of it, I was surprised by how many people actually wanted replays back in the game. I was very surprised with the conversations I was having. So, um, for you guys who do play offline and want the replays in, there you go. So regardless of whether you're AI or a human controlled team, you're going to get all of the gold replays. We also brought back ah, True Broadcast. There you go. True Broadcast is back. That we bring that one back. So uh, now we have two distinct True Broadcast cameras in the game. And that does it for the NHL 24. All right. Deep dive. Let really hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to click the link in the description to pre-order NHL 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Some cool additions to the game. Absolutely there. I'd like to see this across every game mode for all these additions, though. Like the player boards, having custom banners and whatnot. Put that in every game mode. Let me have that everywhere. The additions of like Sandstorm and all that stuff, that's great. I think that's super cool. But again, as somebody who doesn't play with audio on, don't know how much that really affects me. But in the end, if you're looking for a more authentic on ice representation compared to NHL 23, this is definitely an improvement. A lot of people were asking me about full presentation coming back. I don't really know what that means. Obviously having the replays back is definitely an improvement, but people were asking for like, long intros to each game. I don't know if you're going to be getting that, but we are getting more on ice projections from the actual teams themselves. So that's going to be really cool. Now, like I said, as somebody who plays mostly online, doesn't really worry too much about the offline aspects of the game. I can get lost in what some people truly want from an NHL video game. Here's my promise to you. If you guys leave a comment down below, I will send in all of the information that I can towards EA for any improvements you want to see made in the future of the EA NHL video game series. That marks NHL 24 or future titles in NHL 25 and beyond. If you want to see something in the game, let me know and I will send over that feedback. Overall, there's been some pretty cool changes and of course, hopefully the Hockey Ultimate Team Deep Dive is next. Still no word on Franchise or Be A Pro. We know there's not going to be a lot of changes this year, but I'm hoping to see something for that as well. Even bug improvements or something, you know what I mean? Regardless, I am out of here, but thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow with another one. Thanks for watching, y'all. Stay frosty.